Hi, it's Nell, and today it's all about growing bougainvillea in pots. So stick around for that. So if you like videos about gardening, both indoors and out, be sure to subscribe because I post videos on a regular basis here on YouTube, and I have a lot in the archives for you to go and check out. And also I am uploading a video every Thursday, usually in the afternoon on IGTV. So go out and go over and check me out on Instagram too. And as usual, there's a blog post to go along with this video. There will be more information in there because I'm just going to cover on some of the highlights there. So that will be waiting for you down below in the first line or two of the description box and also on my website, joyousgarden.com. It is the end of April here in Tucson as it's the end of April everywhere. <laughs> and it's getting really, really warm. So my bougainvilleas are coming into bloom. So I just wanted to use them as a backdrop. And no, they are not in pots. So we're going to head over to my blueberry ice bougainvillea so we can talk about that. All right, all settled in the corner over here. So meet blueberry ice. Bl blueberry ice is one of the lower growing varieties. It gets three feet by five feet. So the first thing to consider is the type of bougainvillea and the type of pot. Now I liked this very tall, narrow pot. This bougainvillea doesn't get too big, so it's really well suited for containers. So if you are getting a larger bougainvillea, which you can, it's just going to need a really big pot. Um, so that is something to think about if you want a bougainvillea that gets 20 feet you're going to have to have a really big pot for it but you want the plant also to be in proportion with the pot and also the size of the pot this was a five gallon pot they come one gallon five gallon 15 gallon there are 24 inch 24 inch box ones but i doubt you'll put that in a container so if you get like a one gallon it's going to be really small especially in a big container so just consider that uh i will list some of the lower growing varieties that i know of anyway in the blog post some that only get some only get two feet some get up to three to four so those are what i you know suggest in a pot but if you want a taller one you can go for it so before we get going too much further on this video, I just wanted to tell you that this one is sort of an odd shape because it got pruned by the pack rats. I bought it in Phoenix last August. And let me tell you, August, is, uh, August isn't the best time to go to Phoenix if you don't like heat. <laughs> but um, I bought it in August. I brought it home and I put it on my side patio and then it, in September one night, the pack rats absolutely got to it. It was a much beautiful, more fuller shape all the way around. So it's, 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 it's a little bit odd, but you know, it's going to grow and I'm going to work with it. And by July, it's going to be gorgeous. So the first thing is exposure. And just like bougainvilleas planted in the ground, bougainvilleas need full sun to bloom well. They will tolerate part shade but you just won't get as beautiful a bloom on them and th that's what we want bougainvilleas for they are also one plant that can take a lot of heat so watering this is where bougainvilleas growing in in containers will differ from those in the ground because bougainvilleas in in containers need watering more often than they do than those in the ground especially uh bougainvilleas that are really well established in the ground are fairly drought tolerant almost all drought tolerant so um how much you how much you water it depends on your pot size uh the climate you're growing in if you're you know if you're like me in tucson or phoenix or palm springs then you're going to need to water more often because those are very hot climates in the summer where i used to live in santa barbara i watered my um my bougainvillea in a container probably every 10 to 14 days here um i will water the this one in the heat probably every every week so um and the general rule is you want the top two to three inches and depending on how big the root ball 
of the bougainvillea is to dry out before you water it again. And of course, if your bougainvillea is newly planted, you want to keep your eye on it to make sure it doesn't dry out. Now, in the winter time, it's much, much, much cooler here. Our evenings can get into the 30s, so I watered this one probably every two to three weeks. Hardiness, and this is where it differs a little bit too. Now, it doesn't differ in the hardiness itself. It's still hardy. The bougainvilleas are still hardy from 9B to 11 but if you were in a borderline climate zone like me i'm in zone 9b so we can get evenings that dip below 32 uh, then you can easily cover it with a sheet i found that mine are fine down to 30 but if it dips below 30 that's when i will cover this one Oh, and another thing which adds a little bit more protection to this one is it's not out in the open. It's, you know, it's in a corner here, so it's going to be a bit, a bit more protected here. I just had to go in and get a sip of water. If my cheeks look beet red, it's because it's 98 degrees today. <laughs> oh, all of a sudden our heat came. Whoosh. Okay, so now we're going to get on to fertilizing and feeding. I have never fertilized a bougainvillea, so... I don't have a lot of experience with that. I haven't found I've ever needed to. When I first moved in here, I composted my bougainvillea in my bougainvilleas in the ground, and that was the only time, you know, because they're pretty, pretty darn scrappy. But what I do is I do worm compost and compost, which I'm going to show you. I'm actually going to do it. Um, but there are specific bougainvillea fertilizers. There's also some bloom fertilizers to help stimulate blooms. Um, I know that you can also use a palm palm food, I think, a palm and a hibiscus food, but I will leave some choices of fertilizer for you in the blog if you're interested in that. So I have a local worm compost here, and I also have a local compost here. So I'm going to use these two, and this worm cut compost is so nice and rich. I'm just going to go ahead and put like a good inch layer on here. I'm going to spread it all around, and then I'm going to top it with an inch or two of the compost, how much I can get in. Okay, zooming on in so you can see that nice dark layer on the top. I probably ended up putting an inch of worm compost and two inches of the compost on the top and it's not only going to nourish it but here where it's so hot it's going to help to hold some of the moisture in so now we're moving on to pests and my bougainvilleas sometimes get orange aphids in the early spring the spring so or early spring or spring <laughs> and so what i do is i just hose them off I, i've done a blog post about aphids so i will leave a link in the blog post for you. And also there are things that eat bougainvillea leaves. And I've also done a post on that called what's eating my bougainvillea leaves. So that will be in the, in the blog post waiting for you also. Pruning and training. I'm going to do a video right after this about pruning this plant. There's not much to do, but there are a few things I want to do. So you might find that helpful if you have a newly planted bougainvillea in a container but let's go on to training now, training and pruning both depend on the size of your bougainvillea and, and what you want it to do mine stays smaller so i really don't have any training to do I, i'm just going to prune it a bit here and there but if you have a bigger bougainvillea and you do want to train it then you'll need some sort of a support system like a trellis wire, screws on the wall, something for it to cling uh, to, uh, to be wired onto or to be tied onto. Mm -hmm. And other pests I don't know about because I haven't ever experienced any, except for, as I told you early on, the pack rats. <laughs> Planting and soil. Again, there is a separate post and a video on this. I just planted this particular one in October, so it's only been planted about six months, give or take a month. So I, I go into all that, but there are two things I will say. 
you need a well-drained soil and it's also best to leave the bougainvillea in the grow pot when you plant it. So on to the best part, flowering. That's what we love this plant for. Here in Tucson, my bougainvilleas flower off and on for about seven to eight months. In Santa Barbara, it was more like nine or so. So they are great long lasting color. And of course they need that sun and they prefer some heat to bloom also. This one isn't blooming that much because as I said, it is newly planted. It was pruned by the pack rats and we've just started to get warm, but I expect in the next couple of weeks, it's really gonna bloom like crazy. So actually the flower is the center part and these are the bracts, you know, the colored part here, but uh, they do fade a bit. This color will fade a bit as it gets hot in the and in the cooler months, the color tends to be more intense. This video is just about to be edited, so I thought I would give a one month update on how the bougainvillea is doing now. It is May 26th. As you can see, it's filled in a lot. Um, there's no color on it yet, but I can see there's a couple of buds forming there, so that is good. So I said, or I at least thought I was going to make a pruning video following this one, but um, I ended up only taking out a few dead branches and doing some tip pruning. So I didn't think it was enough for a full on, you know, video. So I might do one in the fall, but I'll definitely do one early next spring. So keep your eye open for that. And I just wanted to pull in a little bit closer because this um, this bougainvillea, this blueberry ice with just the foliage only, it reminds me of periwinkle or vinca major, if you are familiar with that plant. So there you have it. Not too complicated at all. I think the three most important things you, you need to know are sun. It needs as much sun as possible. And if this little bug is not gone soon, it needs as much sun as possible. It's going to need water more often in a container than in the ground. How often it's hard for me to tell you. I live also not only in a hot climate, but it's very dry. So it's going to dry out faster here. So um, it just depends on how fast it is drying out in your climate. And three, the hardiness. They are much easier to protect from the cold. Now, if you live in, in Minnesota, you can't expect to cover it every night and have it, have, have it make it. But if you get, if the coldest you get is about 32, maybe 30, just a few evenings, it can't take a lot of 30 or below, but just a few evenings, then you can ease, easily cover it and protect it. And be sure and check the blog post for more details. You know where it is down below and also on, on my website, joycegarden.com. I'm also going to have a picture or two of larger bougainvilleas growing in large containers just so you can see the scale and they will be in the blog post waiting for you. So I hope you have found this video about growing bougainvilleas in containers to be helpful. I have a lot more videos coming your way so be sure and come back for those. I thank you for all your likes and your subscribes. I really do appreciate them. Now let's get out in our gardens. Oh, I just love this color <gasps> and make our worlds a more beautiful place. As always, I thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.